So in typical New York Jets fashion, they went ahead and fired their head coach today and won Robert Sala. The fashion part of it really comes down to the fact that they probably should have actually done this during the offseason. Now, I've got a great video for you coming up from Bamani Jones, which I'll play for you in just a second. But just just some quick thoughts on this one woody johnson who's actually the non-racist version of donald sterling who was the owner of the los angeles clippers back in the day is a horrible owner if you are a jets fan what has he actually done to deliver any kind of real hope to you as a New York Jets fan. Yeah, he brought in Aaron Rodgers three years after his prime. All right, I'm going to go ahead and play this Bamani Jones video for you, and then I'm back with some final thoughts. This is the difference between Robert Sala and Aaron Rodgers. He walked in one day having to earn the respect of the roster and quite honestly appears to still be working on earning the respect of that roster. Aaron Rodgers, on the other hand, has that respect from literally every single player in the league. Like when you bring in a dude like him, you bring in somebody who's already winning the respect game. So when Robert Sala comes out here and says, we gonna change the cadence and Aaron Rodgers come back and say, no, we not, then that means no, We not, because Aaron said so. If Sala and Aaron are not on the same page and you got to get done whatever you got to get done this year, then you got to go get a new coach. Okay, so Bamani points out some really good points in that video. You know, one of them, I think, really just resonates with me, which is the fact that Aaron Rodgers walks in with street cred where Robert Sala doesn't. I'm going to touch base on a couple things here. One, the Jets actually have one of the best defenses in the National Football League. They have allowed very few yards uh, per game to this point against the high power Minnesota Vikings offense in London. They still had a chance to actually come down and win the game. Ultimately, if you go back and watch the video, the Jets' defense is what actually gave Aaron Rodgers the opportunity to throw three picks in the game. Rodgers, who has absolutely been a shell of his former self, is not having a very good season, is he? He's got seven touchdowns, four interceptions, and a quarterback rating of, wait for it, 81.6 through three five games so far this season yes Robert Sala is ultimately responsible for everything that goes on in a National Football League team especially when he is the actual head coach Sala is responsible for bringing in Nathaniel Hackett Sala ultimately is responsible for not having the backbone to actually stand up to a, uh, I don't want to use the word decrepit, but a shell of a former self, Aaron Rodgers, who's just not the same quarterback he was. I mean, did the New York Jets not learn anything from their experience with Brett Favre? The whole idea of going out and bringing in a superstar quarterback who is in the last couple years of his career can only really truly be done by an organization that actually has a real organization behind it. Take the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as an example with Tom Brady. Go back to the Peyton Manning era with the Denver Broncos. Manning could barely throw a 20-yard pass at the very end, but yet the organization around him was certainly strong enough to put the Broncos in a position to win one more Super Bowl for Mr. Omaha Productions himself. Look, Robert Sala is one of the best defensive minds in the National Football League. And when the you headline go back from that game was not the quarterback the of Washington. Stats it was the quarterback of Cleveland. And what now I think has to reasonably defense, be described it is actually as the really worst impressive. transaction 
now, in football in history, terms of Sala there has never been a deal when you consider, I keep New saying York transaction because it's the trade and that then the contract, going to be difficult then the what the Browns Aaron gave Rogers up and gave to Deshaun Watson. The New York it's the Jets. biggest disaster in the history Rogers of the sport. He is the worst quarterback in the NFL right now. Dead last in practically everything. I put together a list of all the things that he's worst at. It's too long to read. It's ridiculous. And by the way, he carries a $73 million cap hit next year. Now we're going to see the year after. again on We're Wednesday talking about a situation where Kevin Stefanski, if he's Pat a smart McAfee man, will do whatever he can to get out of it. Because Jimmy Haslam, the owner, has completely ruined the organization. And honestly, out a way he absolutely which they can get Aaron Rodgers to come on the air and not spew any off any weird conspiracy theories. But I have to say... When you actually really look at everything that went down with this New York Jets team during the offseason, it was so clear. The second Aaron Rodgers jumped on a plane to head to Egypt for a planned vacation that he refused to shift to go to minicamp, it was clear to everybody that was observing this that Robert Sala had ultimately lost the team. Look, As a head coach in the National Football League, you cannot succeed if you do not have the team, the whole team, actually heading in the right direction. And while Bamani Jones was absolutely right with his comments that he made about cred and Aaron Rodgers having more cred than Robert Sala has, the point I would make is, while that is true, Aaron Rodgers is not the same Aaron Rodgers he was during his previous most valuable player years. Aaron Rodgers is slower. He has less confidence in his arm. And certainly, while his mind knows what to do, at this point, it's safe to say his body doesn't always respond. It is as simple as that, Jets fans. It doesn't really matter at this point which defensive coordinator takes over for the New York Jets. The real problem with the New York Jets is the offensive side of the ball. And to actually overlook that and bring in another defensive mind to actually be the head coach of this team is not actually solving the problem. The problem is that Aaron Rodgers absolutely has too much control over what is actually having on the offensive side of the ball. This might actually go down as a opportunity for us all to see multiple head coaches, interim or not, actually get fired by the New York Jets. This is, if you will, the spark of an early California wildfire that is actually going to burn completely out of control. The New York Jets have officially hit the, uh, if you will, the train wreck stage of the season. Now, they are just two and three right now, which means on Monday Night Football, when they play the Buffalo Bills, they'll essentially be playing for first place in the NF or the AFC East. So the season is not totally lost yet. So every decision that Woody Johnson and the New York Jets make going forward should revolve around improving the offense. And my friends, that ultimately means actually hacking the Nathaniel Hackett, which of course they won't do, which takes me back to my Woody Johnson is the worst owner in sports. He's just the, if you will, the non-racist version of one Donald Sterling, who used to be the owner of the Los Angeles Clippers. All right, I want to know what your thoughts are, North America. Go ahead and drop your comments in when you have a chance. For the underrated pod, I am Dave DeBaugh, wishing you all a tremendous rest of your sports viewing day. To the cool new music, we go. This is Phoenix. Phoenix.